Hi guys, my name is Maddie and welcome to another van build video. Today I have two things on my agenda. Number one is to finish my ceiling insulation and number two is to mount Reflectix on my side panels. I purchased this very nice new product from Home Depot today, Super 77 Adhesive, that I'm going to use to try to mount both my Reflectix and the rest of my insulation. Well, while I was at Home Depot, I bought a few other things, including this studding, which means I can start working on building the bench seats for the back, which means electricals coming up. Um, I know that this smile on my face might be confusing, but it's actually one of the things that I'm most looking forward to in this build. It's the thing that I've by far done the most research on. I feel really prepared and excited to do it. I'm really excited to be almost done with these last cover-up steps before I can start really making things look pretty and start to make things work. So at this point, I went to finish up my insulation. I used that adhesive spray only for my ceiling and didn't end up having to use it on the walls, which is great. I took a little meditation break and then got right back to it, but it didn't take too long at all. You'll want to make sure that you have a really well ventilated space, so I did end up opening the side door just to provide that extra airflow. Ta-da! As you can see, the ceiling insulation is all done, and I would say the adhesive worked almost a little too well. So, I guess use some rubber gloves that you can just throw away after, because this, this is certainly not coming off. But I guess that means it's gonna work really well for the Reflectix, so cool. On to the next. So this is the Reflectix that I'm working with, my vapor barrier. Places like the wheel box, I'm just going to use scissors to cut it out. And then the other thing to keep in mind is to be really careful around those corners and make sure that it's really matching the curve of the van. But other than that, it shouldn't be too tricky. One more thing, I was originally going to use the sound deadening to insulate my wheel walls. Boop. <laughs> But I ran out of that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my Reflectix to size and I'm going to use the adhesive to put it on my wheel wells. I'm going to start with that because that sounds really fun. Kidding, there's actually two more things. I talked a little bit about our value in my last video, but I think the biggest take home message for you guys who are just watching from home is the higher the R value, the better the insulation. And this uh, Reflectix actually has a really low R value if you're using it as your primary insulation. But if you use another insulation to allow there to be air pockets in between it and the surface that you're mounting it to, it's R value dramatically increases so I actually have a little bit of foam insulation left over this was what I used for my floors and what I'm gonna do is cut out just a few little squares of this and mount it all over the surface of my wheel wells and then mount the reflectix to that and just that little bit of space in between the reflectix and the wheel wells is actually going to really increase the R value in that area I hope that makes sense so this part was mostly a waiting game because you really just have to wait for the adhesive to become tacky enough to adhere to the wheel boxes. I found I didn't actually have to do this with the insulation and it stuck directly to the ceiling so it must just depend on whatever material you're using. But for the most part, yeah, I just sat and waited and then I folded the Reflectix over the wheel box. Just to show you real quick, this is what I cut that foam insulation out. You can see that's the adhesive starting to become tacky enough to adhere to my wheel well. So that's what it looks like after I've adhered all of those. And then I just put another coat of adhesive on each one of those and on the rims of the wheel well. And easy peasy, the Reflectix just slides right on. Okay, so I just finished uh, foil wrapping one of the wheel wells and I got so excited <laughs> because <laughs> It looks really cute. It's like a little foil fortune cookie. It worked super well and it was like wrapping a present. Now it's all tucked in. I mean, come on, right? For what it is, it's pretty good looking. 
So I ended up using a combination of the adhesive as well as Velcro to attach the vapor barrier to my walls. And I think in the future I would just use Velcro. It has the added benefit of being able to take it off whenever you want and you can find really cheap rolls of it for like 10 bucks at Home Depot. As you can see, it now makes it a lot harder for me to attach cladding. Because I don't know where the beams are, but I was gonna mark them out with a Sharpie, but then I realized, you know, I can actually feel them really easily with my hands. So I think I'm just gonna do that um, instead of taking the time to mark it with Sharpie. I did mark it on the ceiling, but I'm not sure how helpful it's gonna really be in the end, so I don't know, you know, everyone does something different and I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go, just like anyone else would. Um, so we'll see what happens down the road. So here's where we're at. I used some of my batteries to keep those boxes flush up against my wall. And you can see that it looks like a nice tinfoil surprise in here. I did, this is actually not attached over here because again, my window's gonna go right there. So I just left that for now. Not sure how we're gonna frame that out exactly, but I have, I'm starting to get a few ideas about it. And next thing is to start making the seat benches. I also made sure to put in my water tank as well as my batteries just to make sure that the seat benches I make are gonna fit those. Very important, do not forget. So one thing to remember when you're measuring your seat benches is that you need to determine what your mattress thickness is gonna be. So don't measure your seat boxes too high. I definitely ended up figuring out how to build these seat benches as I went. I did add an extra corner in there to make sure that they fit very snugly against my back doors. I didn't want to lose any space back there. And I ended up using studding material for the frame of this and then attaching plywood to it later. And I think the biggest lesson learned, you can kind of even see it in this shot, is that some of the wood that I purchased was slightly warped which made it a total pain in the bum to fasten this to the bottom of my van later. It was possible, but me and my older brother had to throw all our weight into it for me to be able to fasten them down with brackets. So in the future, you know, especially for something that's gonna be your bed and your couch and your dining room chairs, you wanna get really straight, high quality wood. I did make sure to use a square as I went to double check that all of my angles were 90 degrees to ensure that I had a very strong foundation for my seat benches. That's it for the second one. Here's what it looks like. You can see I'm gonna have just enough room to take my batteries out. I am going to put a couple extra support beams in there just to make sure that those batteries don't slide around because they're pretty heavy. But this is just kind of step one. I still have to sand these down. Okay, I'm sufficiently tuckered out. Whew, long day today, but happy that the frames, both frames are done. And I will start cutting out the half inch ply tomorrow morning. I'll touch base with you then. I must have had a really good night's sleep the night before because I busted out these seat benches the next day. I used the framing that I had made as a kind of cookie cutter for the plywood that I cut out and then I used a staple gun to attach it to that frame. 
I didn't end up using any adhesive, though I did use some wood filler in those seams just to make sure that none of them were visible. I then painted it a really beautiful white color and I love how these turned out. They fit so snugly and they look really good. That'll be it for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna move on to my electrical part of the build. I'm really excited to share that with you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.